Hello everyone and welcome back to Crypto Atlas. In today's video, I will be discussing Bitcoin, Ethereum, we'll also take a look at Dash, Orchid, XRP, Litecoin, mostly be diving into the charts today on this stuff, but we do have some news information to go ahead and share with you. Not much on the Bitcoin side. Um, the biggest thing is that you guys saw that there was a massive drop that took place yesterday. We are in the new daily candle position as of right now. We are currently down even further. This would be a third consecutive day. Two days of closure, but third day of movement still pushing in the red. There was actually a huge bounce that took place yesterday. We'll discuss that in just a little bit. First off, if you guys are new to the channel, please don't forget to hit subscribe. Hit the thumbs up like button. Let's try to get to 100 likes on every video that we do. If you guys have been watching my videos every day and you haven't been hitting that like button, it helps me grow my channel. It lets me know that you enjoy the content. It takes a quarter of a second and it means so much to me. I really do mean that. And also click the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all the latest news and information. And with that being said, let's go into the news. First up, talking about Bitcoin. Sleeping Bitcoin's worth $40 million. They've just moved. Mystery Miner spends another 1,000 Bitcoin from the 2010 period of block rewards. On January 10th, another strange string of 20 Bitcoin block rewards from 2010 was spent, was spent after sitting idle for over 10 years. The spending of 1,000 decade-old Bitcoins, worth over $39 million today, follows the recent string of 1,000 unit trans, uh, units transferred on the 12th anniversary of Bitcoin's Genesis block launch. Seven days ago, an old school miner spent 20 block rewards from 2010 that held approximately 1,000 decade old bitcoins. The interesting spending took place on January 3rd, 2021, on the 12th anniversary of the Bitcoin network start. Following that string of 2010 block rewards moved, on Friday, January 8th, a block created on June 21st, 2010 was spent at block height 665055 and was likely a different entity than the mysterious miner that was reported and has been following since March 2020. However, two days later after the single block spend, it seems the mystery miner has appeared once again, spending a massive 1,000 decade old Bitcoins that sat idle for 10 years. All right, didn't move for 10 years. That's a really old wallet. So, you know, seeing these kinds of circumstances five ten years go by and people moving this stuff it's so rare and that's why a lot of people are like whoa what is this and a lot of people are also nervous wondering if maybe this is satoshi nakamoto is it tied to any wallets any data that suggests that potentially it is him because uh, satoshi considerably doesn't have just one specific wallet he has uh, an accumulation thereof but there's also a lot of other people, you know, and then on top of it, too, it started in 2009. This is 2010, late 2010. This particular 1,000 coin spend was similar to the string of coins moved on November 7th and 8th, 2020, as the two 1,000 Bitcoin movements happened back to back over a two day span. There have been a number of coincidences and circumstantial evidence that leads this reporter to believe that all of the 20 to 21 block reward spends from 2010 stem from the same entity. The miner or group of miners block rewards all derive from the same months 10 years ago, and usually the transfers happen very early in the morning, EST. Following the split of the previous 1,000 Bitcoin spend, the 10 Bitcoin addresses saw the coins spent hours later. So 1,000 Bitcoins, quite considerable when you think about it, but is it really? Think about the amount of demand that we have going on. I think with news like this, the fact that we've been in an overbought territory, um, that's just a little bit more of a formula to expect some big drops. And ironically, again, I'm going to look at the charts here in just a second. This massive drop that we had take place, it didn't even really set us back all that much. And so, you know, let's go ahead and talk about some stuff with Dash. So if you guys are going to be seeing here in just a minute, Dash's prices have been going up quite considerably over the last day. But how does that kind of pale in comparison and what's exactly going on? So Bitcoin in itself has had a massive rally. Litecoin has had a very good rally. Uh, XRP is supposed to be getting delisted because of what's going on with their lawsuit. And what's interesting to note with this is that Bittrex is also list delisting several privacy coins or what is being labeled as privacy coins, such as XMR, ZEC, 
and Dash. But these coins actually just recently saw some big gains, right? In an announcement, the exchange said that it would be delisting the trading pairs that pertain to three privacy-focused altcoins, those being Monero, Zcash, and Dash. This didn't happen. In fact, the day of the delistings were announced, Gemini co-founder Tyler Winklevoss, who, you know, it's an American-based company, the Winklevoss twins, the guys that helped first start Facebook, Tyler Winklevoss doubled down on the commitment to supporting privacy coins. So it sounds like privacy coins in association, at least with Gemini, should still hold a pretty decent stronghold until if there is stricter regulations. Because, uh, you know, the government is permitting a lot of these cryptocurrencies, don't get me wrong, but they don't really like the idea of being able to be fully private because that could encourage more illegal base activities. This morning, Chamath Palafatia, I don't know how to say this guy's name. I, I got to try and find a video or something because I've been saying his name more often lately. Noted that he is moving to signal now that WhatsApp has begun to erode the privacy rights that users had on the platform prior. Further demand for privacy-enabling features in technology today could give a further kick to these privacy-focused coins. So he mentioned these three privacy-focused coins. When you think of privacy, I'm hoping that you guys also keep your mind open to the idea of VPNs, right? A virtual privacy network. Now, we'll be talking a little bit more about that in just a second here. All right, so when it was announced back with Bitrix, and this is back January 1st, right, that they were going to be removing them, this is taking place on January 15th. It's January 10th as of the time of me recording this video, and we saw that big spike up take place with Dash that we're going to be showing you guys in just a second here. And, you know, so the fact that they're delisting them and it's only five days away, I'm a little bit concerned that this could be a pump and dump situation. We're going to see something very interesting with the past trend history with Dash, though, of what its all-time high was and where it is currently. It's still got a ton of room to grow. In a response, though, Dash had actually replied back, saying that from a technical standpoint, Dash's privacy functionality is no greater than Bitcoin's, making the label of privacy coin a misnomer for Dash. We have reached out to Bitrix to request a meeting with their compliance team. Hopefully this will be rectified soon. I haven't heard any update in regards to this though. Uh, and as you guys just heard in the previous article, it looks like it's still on track to not being on the Bitrix exchange anymore. In a recent tweet about the delisting, Dash Pay CEO Ryan Taylor also minimized the currency's privacy features. So he says, secondly, Dash is not an AEC. As a literal fork of Bitcoin, all Dash transactions are completely transparent. All inputs, outputs, addresses, and amounts are recorded on each and every transaction and viewable by anyone on its public blockchain. Dash's private send feature is simply a branded implementation of non-custodial coin join. Don't take my word for it. Industry leading experts like Chain Analysis and Perkin Coy agree. Okay. Now, the last little bit of news that I could find on this, this was actually retweeted by Dash earlier today. This is from eToroX. If you guys want to check me out on Twitter, my Twitter handle is in the bottom left-hand side right here at AtlasOfficialTV. You guys are welcome to come. Uh, if you do, hop over to Twitter, say hi to me. Let me know you came from my YouTube channel for Crypto Atlas. New Dash platform aims to compete directly with Ethereum 22, Solana, and Polkadot, plus enables NFTs and other native assets. So they got more info through here. You can actually see somebody else's response from yesterday saying, excited that the new version of Dash enables NFTs, also known as non-fungible tokens, and other native assets such as stablecoins. So much opportunity to build DeFi on a network that is faster and cheaper than Ethereum, for example. These rare NFTs on Dash for Minecraft. Wait, what? Minecraft? Okay, well, you know, you're now you're targeting something that a lot of people are actually familiar with. And that could actually make it more appealing for more people too. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to take a look at Bitcoin and some of these other cryptos first. And then we'll finish up with Dash. So the big granddaddy of them all, right? Let's take a look at Bitcoin for now. So Bitcoin, if you take a look at it, it's had two days of closure in the red. Some back and forth action taking place over here on January 9th. 
Not much movement going on, but it actually had closed out on that daily position, still above $40,000. Yesterday's candle, though, was a different story. At one point, it went up above $41,400, looking like it's getting close to that previous all-time high, potentially going to test $42,000. And then it decided to go down and it went down and it went down and went down and then we have our level of major support being formed right here that was at thirty five thousand two hundred fifty six dollars as you can see there's a lot of relationships being shown throughout these points sure we have a couple of these wicks that have stood out just slightly but overall we've been using this as a very strong uh, bounce point and you can actually see that on the new daily position where we're at right now keeping that line has proven to be very valuable. It actually bounced right off of it at $36,000. So with the previous day though, it did dip just slightly down below before it had a full retracement back up. Didn't even go down to our previous level right here that we had set up as a support at $33,290. Where it closed out, 34,405 basically, well not closed out, it actually bottomed out at that position. It closed out at $38,200 approximately. So we are still seeing it in the red as of the moment. From this point up, $38,150 down to $37,000. You're looking at about a thousand two hundred or so dollar decline, right? Okay. Um, well, a little bit more. Anyways, so looking at this, where we're going to next. I got, sorry, I'm a little bit distracted. I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. I've got this on my other screen right now, and it was just showing lots of green, and now I'm seeing a lot of red. So if I just miscounted my numbers right there, I, I had this in the corner of my eye, and uh, it just threw me off a bit. So sorry about that. Further declines are taking place. Looking at this on a four hourly time frame. Zooming out a little bit, you can see most things have actually been bullish. We have had a slight consolidation space taking place here until within a four hour candle, most of this drop had actually taken place throughout here. If we zoom in even more on a one hourly chart and you can take a little bit of a look back here, there was a substantial amount of volume that took place on this green candle. At one point though, that's where that massive drop took place. So massive amount of selling, massive amount of buying ended up being just a little bit more on that one hour for the buying than the selling and it actually had another two hour rally of still having continuations up before it decided to drop down a little bit more. And so we're in a new position. We're still trying to see ourselves on that level of support right around $36,100. Looking at this on the daily, the 21 EMA has actually begun to curve a little bit off to the side. That's interesting. I was assuming that it was gonna continue its projection path up or if anything, actually slope even stronger, as you can see with this dotted line on this curvature here. If this decides that it wants to continue on at this pace, going from where it is at currently, if it moves sideways, just based on the previous trend, if I just allocate a little bit more to it, then potentially we could see something, I would say, you know, right around January 17th or potentially before. But that's if it only continued to move sideways from where it's at right now if we just had consolidation going on but as you can see we don't really have much instances of consolidation it's like two three days in a row one two there you go and then it moves one two three a little bit of movement up and then a more substantial move up almost all consecutively in these positions we do have some consolidation taking uh, place back in this phase right here so we got one two three four five six seven days in a row a full week of just up and down up and down up and down filling in that space and if we did that here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that would actually put us at another week or so. So it is theoretically possible that we could end up seeing going into what is known as a bear market. And, you know, we have had a very strong rally. It is expected to have pullbacks. Bear markets are expected as well. How long they last, we're in uncharted territories, so it's kind of hard to say that. If we have some major bullish news of some other players coming into the space with this, then I think that could be very, very very bullish and having a little bit of a price drop means that the weak hands are going to get shaken out the people that have strong hands continue to hold they're going to reap the benefits longer and having some lower price points may actually be enough of an incentive from this all-time high that we just hit 
for those new players to come in and say, hey, I've got something of a reference point now. I actually see the potential for this to go up. And with us coming in, more sentiment's gonna come in. And so that means that we could logically come right back to this point and be able to make some nice gains if we decided that they wanted to sell off. But more than likely, the strong hands are looking for long-term investments and not looking for short-term turnovers, right? So somebody like Amazon, Walmart, eBay, uh, they come into this kind of a thing. Tesla, they're probably looking for a long-term hold and more as like a hedge against inflation. All right, what else do we got here? Decides that it wants to break up. If it continues this previous pattern, going all the way up here on the daily candle, we'd actually see some opposition taking place right at 43,000 oh that's kind of evil 4366 six. we'll just say 667 let's just say that <laughs> all right um let's go on i'm saying all right a lot too sorry about that guys and there's a lot more red that's still going on with bitcoin you guys can see it's down getting closer and closer trying to test the waters right there for that level of support so i'll come back to this before we're done with the video and see how things move based on our projections heading over to ethereum ethereum got very close to its previous all-time high right up here 1420 dollars yesterday it got up to 1352 dollars unfortunately with the huge pullback that took place with bitcoin it is now pushing the whole crypto market further down Ethereum was looking very well and being able to position itself on a daily closure to a level that actually had, um, you know, as you can see, we passed above here twice in the last two days above this key level from before at $1,286. And that would have been uh, a lot closer to us having no more opposition on our way towards our previous all time high. We got the one, uh, uh, actually, yeah, I think that was like basically the last major form of contesting. Yep. That was basically the last form of contesting. Okay. At least I didn't say all right right there, right? <laughs> oh, man. I appreciate all you guys. I hope you're all having a great day. <coughs> Excuse me. I hope you guys are having a good weekend. Again, if you're new to the channel and you're enjoying yourself, don't forget to subscribe. We're not done with the video yet, though. And on the new daily, we have a huge red candle. Looks like it is trying to test right around our level of support here at $1,136. If it decides it wants to go even further, I'd be looking at the 21 EMA, which is at $965.37, and then further drop down below that at $836. A lot of red going on, a lot of selling pressure. It could be a very bleeding day. Um, the opening day going in for tomorrow, we'll have to see how things go too. But, you know, a lot of people get shaken out with crypto. And if you're not used to crypto, seeing it drop 10%, you're freaking out. You got to get a little bit more of a backbone. Like, this stuff happens, and it happens a lot in crypto. And then we come back even stronger. So I wouldn't be too worried, right? There's nothing really bad of news that I can see. It just looks like people are finally deciding to start taking their profits. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people are shorting right now. Like a ton of people are probably finally, finally joining back on to the bandwagon to do shorting. So when we do start to flip this and push back up, a lot of people are going to get liquidated and I would expect the prices to start going up tremendously, depending on how much volume comes in in a short amount of time. Because if it is, if it's a slow enough pace, the people are going to drop their shorts and take their profits. But if all of a sudden it just goes like this and we shoot up, a $500, $1,000 increment level over the course of like five minutes, it's not going to be enough time for some of these people to be able to respond. And they're just going to get totally, totally liquidated. And look at what happened with Coinbase yesterday. A lot of people couldn't access their, or today, technically, people couldn't access their accounts again. Ethereum, if it decides it wants to go back up, let's get above $1,282 as a level of resistance, $1,351, getting back above $1,420, and then we go into the price discovery zone. On that one hourly chart, you can see we have four hours consecutively, but there was a massive red candle that had taken place here, nearly tapping down on that level of support back around the 12 o'clock on the UTC side. However, it did pull all the way back up and closed out just barely barely in the red so it's mostly the last four hours that have been the pain in the butt side all right let's oh now i said all right again let's go look at litecoin looking at litecoin very briefly we're going to cover these other coins and then we'll give a little bit more focus on dash four hours once again also all in the red we're seeing a consecutive pattern here in this formation right looking at it on the daily forming a darth mall style pattern 
and then consecutively we have on the new daily position another red candle position i would be looking at 147 dollars as a level of support further drop down below at 145 dollars and 39 cents that would be quite substantial if it decides it wants to go even further than that just hypothetically like things start getting really crazy then i'd be looking at right about what right about here at 125 dollars as another level around 125 okay let's go ahead and change this to red and i'm gonna get that saved bitcoin is still having a massive drop as i can see in the corner of my eye here deciding to want to go up we got a major level we gotta try and break above 189 dollars can it do it well we'll have to see man but we got a long way to go before it can go to another strong level of resistance which is at 256 dollars you could argue and say that on the fibonacci retracement position we also got 223 dollars though looking at, at xrp what's been going on with xrp right because we already know that it's also getting close to getting delisted so yesterday also formed a Darth Maul style pattern. And on the new daily candle position, we got a big red drop taking place now. All crypto seems to be hurting pretty hard today, uh, except Dash was doing really well. We'll take a look to see on the new daily position. I think on the daily, it's actually coming back down. Yesterday, it, it had a nice day though. So if this decides it wants to go further down, let's actually look at a little bit more formation right around here now, since we have other days that have been formed since my previous bottom level supports. So you got some support a little bit higher at 22 cents, further drop down at 17 cents, further drop down to 11 cents. And that is all respective. All right. And then also on the daily position, we're now below the 21 EMA is showing signs of potentially a further continuation down into a bear market position. Being above is very key, but we had a lot of days that were. This is essentially like a fake out here. We had one, two, three days of closure above. Fourth day actually technically closed slightly below. So we have one day of formation there, and this could end up being a further continuation on. Get above this level right here at 37 cents. We got two points of reference, and then another level at 44 cents. Looking at Orchid. Orchid had a nice daily green candle on the 9th, and then guess what? Dumped. The whole thing, look, like right down to a T. Almost. Precisely. Around 27 cents. Luckily, it had some buying pressure that came right back up. But then, with everything that's going on today, lo and behold, here we are, once again, selling off all the gains that have been happening. And you can see it's kind of a trend it's either pump one day and then dump everything the next day right afterwards or dump and then pump everything back the same day right afterwards or it's a two-day formation like right here we have some drops down drop down and actually bounced off near that position came back up a little bit um it's still technically above the 21 uh, 21 ema as of the moment it's showing still signs of bullishness but this very well could be another continuation into this consolidated space if we drag this all the way over here it's still within that same space range in fact i'm just going to go ahead and leave that there for you guys for the moment pulling down a little bit harder onto this we hit the 21 ema we got level of support at 26 cents 0.2622 deciding to go even further down breaking this out into an extension then i would be looking at a level of support at 23 cents 0.2360 Another level at 20 cents, 0 0.2088. And if it decides that it wants to go back up, realistically, let's get above and outside of this consolidated space, right around 32 cents, 0 0.3232. Establishing ourselves in 30 cents would be nice because OXT has been holding pretty strong here for a while, right around in that 20 cent range, 20 to 29 cents, right? Go ahead and get that uh, Say, I think I just saved it. And then now let's go ahead and look at Dash. Dash USD. Whoops. It's actually the wrong one. I wanted to go to Binance, I believe. Is one. Yeah, okay. So I set up the charts here for you guys on the Binance side. And as you can see, in this large red zone, well, what is that? That's actually the Fibonacci retracement from its previous all-time high. So as I start to pull this up, where do we go into the next zone? Well, we would have to go all the way up to $448 to get to the next zone. I mean, like, let me just show you guys this. This is it on the monthly, all right? 
So you got your top position right here and each of your major zones as it continue to drop. So this thing just tanked hard. And if you think that it's going to go back to $1,700 tomorrow, especially with everything that's going on, the fact that it's being delisted, the fact that the whole privacy coins is being scrutinized right now and there's a lot of things up in the air about it, well, I don't know what to tell you guys. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and look at it back on the daily position though. So yesterday you had a really nice gain, massive volume that just came out of nowhere. It's only got five days left on the Bitrix side at least. And as of the moment right now, it's already showing a huge potential pullback. If we decide to do a Fibonacci retracement, and we just look at it from this perspective right here, then I would be concerned about us going to the 50% range, which is what has already been bounced off of. You can see that at $129.25. And if it decides to test that again, as of the day it's already done it, then we could see a drop down to the next major zone, which is at the 0.618 in the Fibonacci. That's at $120.55. Another major zone down here in the 0.786. That's at $108.23. And then another drop further down, going back all the way to where we had the lowest point and also a lot of consolidation formation that is at a bottom of $92.58. Technically, you got your 21 EMA. It's very close to the 0.786. That 21 EMA, just so you know, is at $105. The RSI is suggesting is it being overbought as the volume was just totally out of nowhere. And um, yeah, I would say that this is looking a lot more like a pump and dump type situation. Some fairly good news as we saw with that other stuff, but nothing super amazing to write home about, right? So I'd be very, very cautious with this. If it can go above this level right here at $166.26, then another major zone, at least trying to go back to the Fibonacci levels, would actually be looking at around $213. Okay, so I believe that's everything that we're, we've covered here. Um, talking about privacy stuff, Orchid, I talk about this coin every day. It's an altcoin that I really like. If you want to look more into it, you can. But just so you know, Orchid focuses on VPN space stuff and also nano, pay nano payment technology. So people feel that VPNs or, or privacy stuff is going to be more widely uh, requested as the future comes up here with everything that's going on. Well, then, you know, you could see some nice gain movements going on with Orchid. Now, it's not a privacy coin like a Monero but it does focus with VPNs. So it's a slightly different thing, but it's still in the same kind of general ballpark. And also keep in mind that Orchid is going to be expanding out past just VPNs. They want to do other marketplaces using their technology, and I think that's very exciting for the future of the project. That wraps up this video, guys. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up like button. Let's try to get to 100 likes on this video. Also, click the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all the latest news and information and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about everything today. If there's anything that I may have missed in the news that you think is really important, go ahead and tell us in the comments down below as well. Thank you, guys, and I will see you in the next episode.